Hey, welcome back. In this lesson, I want to take you through three features in DevTools, which can help assist you with accessibility related debugging. Now DevTools does have quite a few features when it comes to web debugging and accessibility um, in recent, I guess, months slash years has gotten a lot better. But these tools can be a little hidden away. So we're going to take a look at what those tools exactly are. Here I am on netflix.com. And the thing I want to direct your attention to is right at the bottom, we've got this footer. And let me just zoom into that a little. And one thing that should hopefully stand out to you about this text is that the text color contrasts quite poorly with the background color, right? They're both very similar shades of gray. The page background and the text color are so similar that the result is you have very poor contrast. And this is pretty common across many mainstream websites, which is a shame because for some people, it can be quite hard to read. I get that there's a kind of UX side to this where they want to draw more attention to the call to action and other parts of the page. But still, if you're going to put something on the page, you want to make it quite legible. Let's open up DevTools and I will inspect the text. Now, the feature that I want to show you right here is the ability to detect the contrast quality of the currently inspected text. So if I make the styles pane a bit bigger, because this is where we're going to be, what you can do is you can find the appropriate color attribute on the text. Remember, this will only work for text, not exactly background color. And you want to click this block right here, and that will open up the color picker. Now, the color picker tool in itself is pretty fantastic. Um, you've got this nice color spectrum where you can choose from different colors. You've got color palettes, which we'll take a look at in a second. But the thing that I want to show you is this line right here that says contrast ratio 2.19. And then it sort of gives you this failure icon. Now this of course should signify to us that something is wrong. Let's click on this. And straight away, you get this line, this wavy curved line that's overlaid on the color spectrum. And it turns out that what this line signifies is the point at which color is inaccessible and the point at which it is accessible. Now, of course, the term accessible in this case might be a little unclear. So in fact, it turns out that this is perfectly quantified. Now, I myself am not too familiar with this, but fortunately, if you just click on those two A's or triple A's, that will take you to this web fundamentals documentation where you can read more about these web aim guidelines, which specifies exactly what it means to have text which is accessible. But going back to the actual UI itself, you can see in this case, we're getting failures all across the board. And if we move that anywhere above the curved wavy line, you can see that here the color is, again, it's just not accessible from a contrast perspective, right? But if I drag it below, suddenly, not only visually does it look so much better, but yeah, it's actually passing all of these guidelines. Now, one thing you might be saying is you might be saying, well, do you know what? I'm not a designer. And when I use this color spectrum, I'm not sure exactly what color to pick. I mean, we've got a pretty large choice here. So one small suggestion, and this is a little bit of a divergence, but you can open up these color palettes. And in this case, you might want to choose page colors. Now it turns out what this page color option does is it will extract all of the dominant page colors from your page and allow you to basically select them and prototype what they look like on the text that you've inspected. Okay, so here we've got some blue. And unfortunately that fails all the guidelines. So we can carry on. And by kind of coincidence, it seems that they all fail, well, apart from these two, which I guess aren't too bad, but it still fails this triple A guideline. So in fact, let's not use the page color color palette, but let's switch to the material design color palette. And again, we can go through. So even without much experience in UX and design, you can still find like some decent colors, hopefully. None of these colors are actually very great. So we can stick with that, um, that purple sort of color, at least that passes two of them, but. Do you know what? It doesn't hurt us just to go a little bit deeper down. But anyway, but anyway, hopefully you get the gist of what this contrast tool allows you to figure out. Inaccessible, accessible, pretty much. And here, if I hit enter, it'll actually keep that color. I could copy that. I could put it in my style sheet in my code base. And I could send it over. I could take a screenshot of this and send it across to the team. Now, before we leave that accessibility contrast tool, I want to just very quickly, I want to show you this Get Pocket website. Now, I think the contrast on the headline text, let me resize DevTools a little so this appears. Okay, I think the contrast on this text and the background image is perfect. Uh, I don't, I mean, at least in my eyes, I don't see that there's anything wrong with it. Um, but just very quickly, I still want to use it to demonstrate this contrast ratio right here. 
Because it turns out DevTools isn't actually giving us a guideline. The reason is because there is a background image and DevTools has no idea what the background image is and what part of the image it should be using to calculate the contrast ratio. So it actually gives us a color picker tool where we can select the image or we can select like a representative example and it will give us the, um, the usual wavy line that we've come to know. And you get the usual guidelines along with your success or failure state. And I think this is really useful. Okay? And of course you wanna select different parts of the image. I mean, it's very common on landing pages. For example, you have an, a background image, a hero image, sorry, of a park. And in that park, you'll have like a blue sky, you know, green grass, and you have some text overlaid. Now, when you resize the browser, that text, not always, but it can very well appear over different parts of that image. So you wanna make sure to inspect to, you know, using this tool, you want to make sure to inspect various parts of that image and make sure your text is, you know, it doesn't clash too much with that. And very quickly onto the next feature, we're not going to spend too much time with this one. It's more just to let you know that it exists. Here I am on gov.uk. If we open up the elements panel, you've got the DOM tree at the top and at the bottom, you've got the styles pane, which is probably where you spend most of your time. However, one of the panes right at the end is the accessibility pane. For you, it might be hidden, so you have to hit these two arrows, and you can open up the accessibility pane. And what you get, which is kind of cool, is you get an accessibility tree. Now, if you've never heard of that term, you probably want to do a bit of research because it's an important part of accessibility. Go and read about that if you haven't, but just know that it exists right here. And what's also cool, if I inspect that search icon again, basically the accessibility pane extracts or cherry picks various accessibility related properties for you out of the DOM tree and it presents it to you here. So you get this kind of condensed view of what sort of information the DOM tree is conveying to various assistive devices. And maybe just to give one more example, I think there's a form somewhere here. Um, here's the form. Okay, so you see this form has a role of search. Well, if I open up this a little bigger, you see it's presented us the ARI attribute role search, but what's cool is I can actually double click and edit this. And what's cool is I get all the applicable property values for this property in particular, the role property. And that's pretty much what I wanted to show you with the accessibility pane. Okay, and let's take a look at one more feature. I'm gonna head on over to the audits panel, select perform an audit, and you want to uncheck everything except the accessibility audit, and you wanna run that audit. DevTools will reload your page. And by the way, while we're talking about it, the audits panel is fantastic. It's got lots of performance recommendations as well, but we're not looking at any of that. We are just looking at accessibility related stuff. If I, for example, open this up right here, oh, the text looks a bit weird. Hmm. Um, it will basically give you all of the audits that you passed and all of the audits that you failed. Here, I think GovUK have performed fantastically with a score of 100, which is really great. Here it's saying, for example, color contrast is satisfactory, which we now know a bit more about. Elements are well structured that's saying lists contain only LI elements, script, and templates. Let's take a look at an example where we don't necessarily meet all guidelines. So here I am on the YouTube trending page, straight to the audits panel, perform an audit, accessibility, run audit. That audit has finished. Um, the score is not terrible, don't get me wrong, but it's still worth exploring some of these. Let's just explore the first one. And you see it's saying elements use attributes correctly, okay. And it specifies that image elements do not have alt attributes. Okay, and even lists what those elements are. In case you see this and you're not too familiar, just very quickly, if I head on over to Amazon as an example, and I will inspect, let's say, this camera, and let's just check out this image tag. In this image tag, can you see this attribute, this alt attribute right here? Sony model number digital compact camera. And this is really good because not only is it good for certain assistive devices, but also if I just break the image URL, you can see that the result is it still gives me some kind of text on what the image was supposed to represent. And this is really useful because images can fail for all sorts of reasons. It can fail on the server. It can fail because, you know, my network connection died. And that's one example of where having alt text is useful. Going back to the YouTube accessibility audit, we can see it's complaining that certain images on the page don't have alt attributes and it's listed what those elements are. Now, normally I would say, I think this is a canary thing. You'd be able to at least right click and I think reveal an elements panel or like just single click and it takes you straight there. For whatever reason, it is not doing that. So I'll show you another little trick. 
It's telling us what image elements don't have alt text. And here I can see there is some sort of element where in the source URL, it's got 0x, fff, and so on. So I'm going to go straight to the elements panel. And a little trick is you hit Command F or Control F on Windows. And I will do a search. This is an unusual way to find elements, but yeah, here it is. Okay, so we've got that image. And indeed, if I make DevTools a little bigger, indeed, you can see we've got this big image tag and it has no alt text. Okay, and it did list quite a few. So let's just see if these, these thumbnails have alt text. Image, no, they don't. They've got source, width, class, ID, but there is no alt text for some reason. One thing I kind of like about this audit rule, using YouTube as an example, is because it highlights something kind of interesting. These tools are really not meant to solve all of your problems for you. They are meant to assist you in your debugging journey. The wrong approach would be to look at this rule and go straight to the code base and start adding alt text. What you want to do is you want to explore the page and understand the sort of context as to what the alt text might be and why it may be omitted. Because one kind of interesting thing I noticed about this page as you see, we've got an image tag for this thumbnail. There's no alt text, but if you scroll up a little, you see for this anchor tag, which wraps the image, they've got aria hidden equals true. Now I wonder why that could be. And if you open up this pane right here and head on over to accessibility, you can see it confirms it's ignored. It confirms aria hidden is true. And finally, it even tells you the accessibility node is not exposed because it is aria hidden. And then I am kind of taking a little guess here but what would be the result of adding alt text to this thumbnail image? Using the first video as an example, a screen reader may read out Janelle Monet make me feel, right, for the image. And then it will read out again when it encounters this text, Janelle Monet make me feel. And that's not incredibly useful. So it's entirely possible the reason that they have aria hidden this anchor tag, which includes the image without an alt attribute, it's entirely possible it's because they don't want duplicated information for certain assistive devices. If you head on over to this text right here, so that's the video title element. But if you look at the ARIA label, you can see Janelle Monet, Make Me Feel, official music video and so on. It specifies the artist, it specifies the duration, or is that, no, sorry, that's the upload date. Uh, and it specifies the number of views. So they have actually embedded what I would, consider sufficient information in at least one element. And that would hopefully be read out by a screen reader. And it kind of answers the fact as to why they may have omitted alt text on this thumbnail. Okay, so let's very quickly recap. We saw contrast ratio details. So to do that, you just wanna inspect some text right here and bring up that color picker tool. And you'll see the contrast ratio here we've passed because we did actually change the text. So you can see everything here is considered poor for contrast ratio. Everything in this side of the Kirby line is considered great for contrast ratio. And as a reminder, if ever you have a background image, DevTools fully supports that. You just want to inspect parts of that image and that contrast ratio line will work. We also saw the accessibility pane. If we head on over to the elements panel, go to the accessibility pane, you'll get a full accessibility tree and it will cherry pick certain ARIA-related properties for you so that you can view them right here. And then finally, we saw the audits panel where you can definitely run all sorts of interesting audits like performance audits. But in this case, we were just taking a look at accessibility audits. And that just gives you a huge heap of information. It will tell you what you passed, what you failed. And you can almost always click on an audit to read more about that particular audit rule. So right there, there's a learn, learn more button. And you click on it and it takes you to a dedicated page which teaches you about that audit. That's it for this video, I'll catch you later.